Since we know that we want to make a RESTful site, let's figure out what uh, actions our controllers need to be able to support and how we get those actions to be supported by our controllers in our Rails framework. So I'll, I pointed to this Rails guide already here and we need uh, to be able to handle that properly. And the, the easiest way to do that is with this table right right here on this page. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit a file. So let me go to this right here. We're going to edit a file called config slash routes.rb. If you remember from an earlier presentation, our routes are how the Rails framework figures out to convert a request to a particular controller and so in in that routes file we're going to make that connection and so we're going to use something like this resources and then give it a symbol and what we're we're saying here is that we're going to have a collection of these resources <clears throat> and these resources should be plural so that it indicates to to that so we know that we have a, a users model a user model and so we're going to have resources of users so we're going to, to do that with our config slash routes.rb but what does that do uh, well th what that does is it sets up these seven different actions that our user controller is now going to claim to be able to handle and so we're going to combine just like we looked at with our, our restful table here we're going to combine a request type and a path so we're going to take off the HTTP and the server name because we know that we're just going to look at the path portion of the URL and we're going to combine those two together to get a particular action that we're going to be able to support and what that's going to turn into is each of these actions is going to be a method in our controller and we'll see that later but for now we, we're going to look at these combinations pretty carefully so a get request uh, or any verb is either going to look at slash and the the name of our resource so in this example it's photos in our code it's going to be users and it a specific ID is going to be slash photos slash and then this colon ID represents an, a placeholder for a specific ID that that photo has and so these uh, that look like slash photos are going to correspond to this top row in this document here and these down here that have slash photos colon ID are going to correspond to this bottom row down here and so what we can see is these are actions on the collection so we're going to get a list of all of the photos uh, we're going to create a new photo for for that collection we're going to, uh, in, in these cases down here, we're going to get a specific photo or we're going to update a specific photo or delete a specific photo. Uh, those cover all but this and, and this, this new and this edit. And these are, are kind of interesting actions because they don't show up in our table right here and the reason why they don't show up is because uh, I suppose technically they aren't necessary from the server's perspective but they are necessary from the user interface perspective if we want to create a new photo we need an HTML document that allows us to fill in the information to upload that photo maybe you'd say who it's owned by what the copyright constraints are so forth and what this request does is it returns the HTML form 
that when, when the user clicks on the submit button for that form, it will submit to this using a post request the actual photo that we want to be sent. So this request right here is not getting something from our model or updating something from our model, but it's getting what the necessary mechanism so that we can update our models. In this case, it's a new instance of a photo. In this case, it's an update of an existing photo. And so you can see here, this new is a modifier of the collection, whereas this edit is a modifier of the particular photo in question. In both cases, though, we need an HTML form that uh, represents the what the web browser is going to present to the user so that they can create that new photo or edit the photo and, and update some sort of information. So this new is almost always going to be connected with this create and this edit is almost always going to be connected with this this update because the new is going to post to this create whereas this edit is going to patch or, or put to this this update right here. And so by having these resources line in our config dot routes file, what we're saying is we want to have a controller, a user controller that can support those methods. So let me just show you real quick by doing a rake, remember that's a Ruby make, uh, I'm going to make routes and what this is going to do is this is going to look in this file which is pretty simple right now, it's mostly just comments, we've just added this one line and it's going to list all of these different actions that we have supported. So we're going to have a users controller and then the hash mark separates the controller from the action in that controller. Uh, and so we have each of those seven actions. You see the URI pattern that matches that and so we're going to be able to support all seven of those actions for our users. <coughs> we will cover this line, uh, th this column later, but for now we are able to support a user controller with these actions. In the next set of videos we actually have to create that controller to be able to respond to these various routes.